Well, hello, everybody. How are you doing today? You know, I wanted to go back to something that Jim said earlier about naked versus naked. And by that definition, I certainly want to be naked. What do you think? Um, but today, I'm going to talk about the naked truth. So I'm so happy to be here on the opening day of Breaking Through Power. It's an amazing event, right? First, I want to thank Ralph Nader, and all the hardworking staff from the Center for the Study of Responsive Law who put this together. This is a really impressive event. So I'm here today to tell you about how the Pension Rights Center has been breaking through power for 40 years and how it's paid off. And Ralph before talked about rumbling. Well, we have to do some rumbling here today. So, what is the Pension Rights Center? And make sure that these are working. Hello. Ah, there it is, great. So we're a national consumer rights organization that's been working since 1976 to promote and protect retirement security for workers, retirees, and their families. We have a vision that when people leave the workforce, they have enough money to pay their bills pay their medical expenses, and continue to be productive citizens. Because guess what, guys? If people have adequate income, they're more likely to be able to continue fighting for justice throughout their lives. So the Pension Rights Center really hasn't changed uh, in our 40 years, but the challenges in some of our strategies have. And that's what I'm talking about today. The Pension Rights Center was started 40 years ago by the amazing pension attorney Karen Ferguson when the visionary Ralph Nader said, Karen, go make pensions an issue, and here's a check to do it. Karen Ferguson is actually still working today. She's still the director, been working for 40 years. So I'm Karen Friedman, and the executive vice president, and I'm known as Karen number two. And when people talk about the Pension Rights Center, they typically talk about the Karens. We've been working together for roughly 25 out of the 40 years, and I have a passion for pensions, and I hope you will too by the time I finish this speech. So many of you in this room may have seen the new movie out, Superman, Batman, Dawn of Justice, which is actually a pretty awful film. But the reason I bring it up is because we in this country are obsessed with superheroes who fly in, conquer evil, and solve our problems. But here's the truth, folks. There's never one person who does everything. Leaders inspire, but all of us are needed in the fight. So I'm here to say today that we are the superwomen, we are the supermen who together can solve this country's problems. And after this conference, I propose that we write and produce our own movie, Super Activists, Dawn of Justice, How Ordinary People Saved the World. And that could be part of Ralph's Civil Justice Academy Awards. What do you think about that? And that is exactly what this conference is about. So, right now, I'm going to tell you how the Pension Rights Center, with a strong mission, a small budget, but tons of passion, has helped change laws and regulations, and even in some cases, we've changed how both companies and pension plans operate. So, why was the Pension Rights Center started? So, put on your time travel glasses, and let's fly back to the year 1976. That was the year disco music was filling the airwaves. President Carter was elected president. And to put it all in perspective, Angelie Jolie was still in diapers. Most importantly, at least from our perspective, it was two years after the passage of the new federal private pension law, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, better known as ERISA, which protects the reasonable pension expectations of workers and retirees. The landmark law, ERISA, was developed by a bipartisan Congress and signed into law by Republican President Gerald Ford and was called by the Republican Senator, Sen Senator Javits, 
who is one of the lead sponsors of ERISA, one of the most important pieces of social legislation since Social Security. Before ERISA, tens of thousands of people were losing their pensions every day because there were few laws regulating pension plans, and companies could do pretty much whatever they wanted. They could require people to work until retirement age to get their pensions, and then fire them two days before their 65th birthday. Bye-bye pensions. Employers could invest the money in those days in bogus casinos in Vegas, facing no consequences. And if a company in those days, this is prior to 1974, went bankrupt, workers could lose everything. So ERISA created basic standards to protect pension promises, including creating a pension insurance program to protect people in bankruptcy, developing investment and funding rules, and setting minimum rules on how long people needed to work to earn the right to a pension. But like all laws that are duped out between different parties and stakeholders, ERISA wasn't perfect. There were many gaps, and Congress could not envision all the problems that could occur. So step in the Pension Rights Center. The Pension Rights Center from its earliest, the earliest days helped people understand their rights under the law, and we began hearing from people as soon as we started who were left out of the law. And over time, we documented those issues. There were widows and divorced spouses who learned they weren't eligible to get their husband's pensions, even if they had been married for decades. There were corporate raiders. Some of you may remember Carl Icahn of 1980s fame, who found ways of looting so-called surplus pension assets to finance takeover schemes. There were folks who worked nine years and eight months but lost their jobs before the 10 years they needed to earn the right to a pension. So to solve these and other problems, the Pension Rights Center did what we now consider our stock and trade. We did it then, we do it now. We identified and documented problems. We used our technical know-how to develop workable solutions. And then we mobilized affected citizens in women's organizations, labor unions, retiree groups, in coalition for the passage of laws. We were, and consider ourselves now, to be the great catalyst for retirement income reform. So over our history, the Pension Rights Center, and I won't go through all of these, we were instrumental in passing six federal laws and in helping to implement numerous regulations to expand benefits and rights for widows, divorced spouses, low-income earners, short-service workers, to stop pension rating, and to help create a legal help network. But this is what I really want to talk about today. What are the strategies for change? How did we pass these laws? Well, I want to start by saying you have to have the facts, and you have to have the know-how, but you also need to get creative, especially when you're small and under-resourced, which I think every organization you're hearing from today is. So I thought I'd share a few stories of how we got laws passed in our first few decades. Back in the 1980s, we got the widows and divorced spouses who were left out of ERISA featured on the Phil Donahue Show, which in those days was the hottest talk show and generated all kinds of buzz. We used the power of these stories to get to Congress. For instance, we arranged for Pat Tice to testify before the Ways and Means Committee about how women would lose their survivors' pensions if their, if their husbands died at the wrong time. She came and she talked in this soft voice and she said, I came today be because I thought I could be helped by the legislation to protect widows, but it's too late for me. My husband died this morning. I showed up today to help others. Can you imagine this? You could have heard a pin drop. Suffice it to say, can Congress soon passed the Retirement Inc Equity Act. To draw attention to pension looting, we delivered cookies to all the key members of Congress saying, stop companies from stealing from the pension cookie jar. And one of my favorites in the 1990s, when, when uh, IBM tried to cut its older workers' benefits, employees flew a blimp over a football stadium saying, 
IBM stole my pension, is yours safe? And faced with a bad PR campaign, IBM actually changed its uh, practice for a lot of those employees, and Congress ended up changing the law. So when you think about social change, think facts, think solutions, but think creativity. Today, especially in this media-saturated market, it's more important than ever. So now let's move to the present time and see what we're doing now. As you can imagine, 40 years later, the retirement landscape has changed and there are more challenges than ever. Um, at $16.5 trillion, oh, sorry about that, I just went the wrong way, okay. At $16.5 trillion, pensions are one of the world's largest sources of private capital. And, it, and we as taxpayers subsidize the private system of pensions and 401ks to the tune of $132 billion. So you're all sitting here and you're listening to us and you're saying, huh, with that much money in the pension system, it must be doing a great job for people, right? Well, it isn't. While policymakers talk incessantly about the budget deficit in this country, there's little talk about a huge and growing retirement income deficit, which is now standing at $7.7 .7 trillion. $7.7 .7 trillion. The retirement income deficit, which was calculated uh, by the Center for Retirement Research at Boston College, is the gap between what people have saved as of today and what they should have saved as of today to meet their basic retirement needs. So what has caused this retirement deficit? About half the private workforce has no pensions or savings to supplement Social Security, which is averaging about $16,000 a year for the average retiree and less for low-income workers and women. Employers are dropping, cutting back, or freezing good old-fashioned pension plans, which promote a specific benefit at retirement in favor of 401k plans, which really haven't cracked it for most Americans. In fact, half of all households with 401k plans have only $59,000 accumulated in their accounts. And for people approaching retirement, it's closer to $103,000, which isn't enough to make it through retirement. And consider this, for all households, not just those with retirement accounts, they have saved about $2,500. $2,500. And that it's, it's worse for uh, workers of color. Now, opinion, the national opinion polls reflect America's anxiety, anxiety. A recent Gallup poll shows that Americans are more worried about not having money for retirement than any other economic issue, including paying for health care, their mortgage, or their kids' education. So the Pension Rights Center is working every day to try to develop solutions to address this retirement income deficit and protect against broken pension promises. To address the lack of pension coverage in this country, the Pension Rights Center has called for a new national, universal, secure, and adequate pension system on top of Social Security. And we strongly support the expansion of Social Security, and we're also working for new creative solutions, both in the state and national level. We are also ensuring that retirees and workers already earned pensions are protected. We're seeing new trends every day where consulting firms advise corporations on how to cut pensions and other benefits by taking advantage of loopholes in the law, by offloading pensions to insurance companies, and we're even seeing something in recent years where nonprofit hospitals with a loose connection with, say, a church or a synagogue have worked to convert their federally protected pension plans into unprotected church plans, endangering the pensions of millions of workers and retirees. And on this last issue, because of the research done by the Pension Rights Center, there's now 12 lawsuits, many of which have been decided in workers and retirees' favor. Now I'm going to spend the last part of my speech talking about two victories in 2016 where the Pension Rights Center and our allies stood up to power and we won. And this is really important, the, the, the winning parts. So these are all of our activists. This is about winning, guys. 
So lots of people now say, Karen, come on, it's impossible to have victories now in this divided Congress. Well, with grassroots support and enough diverse stakeholders, we believe that certain legislative victories even today are possible. But we have seen also great things happen, guys, in the regulatory arena. We had two big successes this year that I wanted to share with you. The first is about stopping predatory practices in the financial advice industry. The Pension Rights Center and allies such as ARP, Consumer Federation of America, the AFL-CIO, joined together in a coalition called Save Our Retirement to stand up against the multi-million dollar lobby of the financial industry. And we won a great victory for American consumers. For the last five years, brokers and financial institutions fought vigorously to stop the Department of Labor from releasing a common ground rule that, would have, that ensures that brokers and financial advisors who give advice on your retirement account has to do so in your interest, not only to line their pockets. Huh. Pretty reasonable, right? This conflicted advice, guys, was costing American consumers $17 billion a year. But of course, the industry fought this because they're making big bucks off of giving conflicted advice. But here's the thing, we fought the industry and we won. And how? By bringing together a strong consumer coalition, coordinating technical comments to the agencies, meeting with editorial boards, educating policymakers, doing Twitter campaigns, and being persistent. The battle isn't over because, of course, the financial industry is still lobbying Congress to try to weaken the law. They're threatening lawsuits, the whole thing. But we're confident we can overcome because this is the right result. Another huge victory for, the, for, for retirees in the Pension Rights Center in 2016 was to protect 270,000 retired truck drivers and workers in the central state's pension plan who faced pension cuts, ready for this, 40 to 70% because of a terrible law that was passed at the end days of 2014. You guys probably don't even know about this. Congress in the dead of the night, end of 2014, attached a bill called the Multi-Employer Pension Reform Act to an end year spending bill that allowed certain underfunded pension plans to slash the benefits of retirees in order to fix underfunded plans. This was unprecedented and torpedoed the most fundamental protections of ERISA. Suddenly, retirees who'd done everything right had given up wages, vacation pay, in exchange for a lifetime pension learned that these unbreakable pensions that they earned were about to be broken and their lives devastated. We knew that these cuts had to be stopped. So working with thousands of truck drivers, spouses and widows, and warehouse workers and others, certain unions and ARP, we developed a campaign to both try to change the law, but also to influence the Treasury Department, which was given authority to review these cuts. We used the tactics that I talked about earlier, the tactics that we've always used, but updated. We analyzed the law and posted plain English summaries on our website. When thousands of retirees contacted us, we helped them with, provide them with information and they put it on their own Facebook pages, and guess what? Now all these retirees have organized themselves into 60 powerful committees in 30 states. In April, the retirees themselves organized a rally outside the Capitol with 2,000 retirees, spouses, and widows calling for Treasury to reject the central state's application and for Congress to pass a bill that would repeal the, the bill that was passed in 2014 and stop these cuts. And an amazing victory for consumers, the Treasury Department, after receiving thousands of comments from retirees, the pension rights centers, labor and retiree advocates, rejected the application for sound legal reasons. So while Congress passed a law in 2014 behind closed doors that failed retirees, the regulatory process protected them. This is democracy at work. And now, and now we and the retirees are pushing for repeal, repeal of that terrible 2014 uh, bill. Uh, and we're pushing for a bill that was actually introduced called the Keep Our Pension Promises Act by Senator Sanders and Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur um, from, from stopping these, these cuts. 
But this is the thing that's really, that I really think is critical for this conference. The thousands of former truck drivers are now effective citizen activists. This is what they do every day. They email me a hundred times a day. They have become the best lobbyists I've ever seen. And they have inspired the Pension Rights Center to work even harder. So I want to just say, remember my story about Pat Tice from 1984? Well, 32 years later, Rita Lewis, a widow from Ohio, testified before the Senate Finance Committee, and she changed the hearts and minds. Rita, whose late husband Butch was injured in Vietnam and then drove a truck for 40 years, testify how 40% proposed cuts to her survivor's pension would force her to sell her house and stop her from taking care of her dad who had stage four cancer. She was so effective, again, you could hear a pin drop. Her testimony was called the most powerful that members had heard in the committee and led to a commitment for senators of both parties to work toward bipartisan legislation. And the Democrats also all wrote a, a, a letter um, asking for bills. So those, this is democracy in action, guys. And I want to end by saying this. Go back to my first point. We are the supermen, we are the superwomen of the citizen action movement. So please join with the Pension Rights Center in our larger movement for retirement security for all, for today's and future retirees, to protect pensions made to people in all pension plans, protect and increase social security, work with us to repeal the Multi-Employer Pension Reform Act, work with us to help create a universal, secure, and adequate pension system for all people, and let's keep fighting. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>